Hello everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where on Wednesdays we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. Uh, today's Woodblock uh, Wednesday is sort of a preview of my upcoming exhibition, which will be next week, um, if all goes well. We're working on doing the finishing touches, and so our latest update for the summer um, is almost here. So if you haven't visited us, uh, go check out our current exhibition of masterpieces from all genres um, that's cur currently up now. Um, and we, of course, will be continuing that exhibition because there's amazing pieces in, in, in that showing, but we will certainly be adding to the website. Um, and for those of you who are new, welcome. We do these live videos on Facebook on Wednesdays, of course, and then we archive them and they, they're they uploaded uh, onto YouTube. And so you're, you could catch all the previous Woodblock Wednesdays um, on our website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. You'll go to the Woodblock Wednesday section and then you'll see over a hundred episodes. Uh, Basically, they focus on Japanese prints and paintings, a little bit of everything for everyone. So uh, if you haven't visited our website, feel free to, to do so. We also have a wonderful bookstore and other goodies for collectors. Now, um, for today's uh, Woodblock Wednesday, I have two prints by a fantastic Shinhanga artist. Um, he's known by two names, um, Harawaki or Shote, and he created some of the most uh, iconic designs of the 20th century. And he, I mean, he's a prolific artist, but I have two really wonderful examples of his, of his work to share uh, with all of you. So without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. So I'm gonna pan out, I always like to do that and show what's on the table. Now, please excuse me, today this overhead light is not on. And you might be able to tell the the out the the um outlet for the for the light is not working. I need to replace it. So um I have a, an overhead light from another source that might work. We'll we'll see how the, this goes today. Um. So let me let me um bring the phone over so you could see what I have. Um. And I have two prints by the artist uh Harawaki, Takahashi Harawaki. He he's also known by the uh the other the other name as Shote, and he was born in eighteen seventy one and passed in nineteen forty five. And um, Harawaki produced a lot of designs. I mean, he was prolific. And he worked with uh, several publishers. But for these sort of Tanzaku-style um, prints that are inspired by a traditional sort of format that um, gets its lineage from scrolls, there are these narrow uh, prints. So if you can imagine an Oban size print, and, and we have here a sheet of paper, it, it is it is certainly not as wide as a as a sheet of paper. So you really get a sense of of it being almost like a scroll. And um, this work is called U Ueno Toshogu, and it was done about 1924 through 1927. It was done after the earthquake. And it, it showcases uh, Ueno, the park of Ueno. And in the park, uh, for those of you who have been there, the, you know that there's a Toshogu shrine that's inside uh, Ueno. And here we have a view of the pagoda that's sort of sticking out from the tree line there. And what, what I should point out, which is interesting, is that this shrine was created in 1627 and renovated uh, shortly after about 1651. And it has basically stood there since then. Um, of course, they have done renovations uh, since the 1600s, but um, it was never destroyed by the fire of 1923 that was caused by the earthquake, of course, or the allied bombings of Tokyo. So it's one of those rare occurrences that we have something that's actually quite old in Tokyo. 
And so this particular design is a fantastic view. It's beautiful. It's a night scene. Um, and what, what we have here is during the cherry blossom uh, viewing time, when all of the blossoms are out, people often take strolls throughout the day or in the evening to enjoy sort of the weather and the blossoms. And we have here some, some night um, walkers who are just sort of walking around in the park um, and enjoying the views. And then we have this really beautiful cherry tree that is um, very prominently placed in the composition. Um, and um, we have a beautiful stone garden um, lantern here. And um, I mean, it's just a, a very picturesque, quaint scene that you would imagine uh, would happen there during cherry blossom season. So I want to zoom in so you could see the beautiful printing of this design and the masterful use of light. You, you could see that light sort of um, it's sort of uh, emanating off the, the tree. What we don't see here is a source of the light, but if you look further in the composition, there is a sort of a, a street light that's lit here. And so one can imagine a street light just off to the viewers a left, and um, it's illuminating, of course, the scene we see the the shadows uh that that are cast below what i also suggest is is i think there's also some moonlight you could see that the sky is actually not as dark as one would imagine and so it's either early evening but this source of light that is off the tree is actually kind of bright so i'd imagine it's a very bright moonlight um which really um sets the mood here I'm going to zoom in so you could see the beautiful cherry blossoms. And of course the printing effects here. Very, very beautiful. The It's so subtle. The, the printing has this sort of at atmospheric night, almost slightly misty quality to it. And I think um, many artists worked in this sort of format, this Tanzaku-style format, but I think Hiroaki really excelled at it. And his designs not only take advantage of the, the format, but celebrate it. And his designs, uh, you know, a lot of them that I've, I've seen by other artists, the designs happen just to be this format, and, and they sort of squeezed in the composition to, to fit. Whereas in this case, the this entire design, the verticality of it, so we have a stone garden, a stone lantern, I'm sorry, stone lantern here, the very tall cherry tree, and then the pagoda, and even the figures below, they all echo the ver verticality of the composition. And so, you know, I, I mean, this is, you know, a master at work using sort of a, a constraint or within the, you know, his, uh, within sort of this genre of printmaking and the celebrating it. I, I kind of find it uh, sort of analogous to poetry or even the, you know, for, for example, the haiku that is a five, seven, five syllabary form. You know, when you have a limitation within, you know, a, a poetic structure like that you have to keep to the rhythm or the the pattern of syllables um and but once you do that you could create something of, of beauty and in this case you know Hiroaki really exploited the format of the of the long horizontal tanzaku form to accentuate and and create wonderful um designs so I'm going to zoom in one last time and we'll go to the other composition. I, this is one of my favorite designs showcasing uh, cherry trees. I mean, and there are thousands of prints um, produced in Japan on, on this very subject. But I just love his use of light. And also just the, 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 the form of the, of the, 
the composition being such a narrow sort of uh, composition, you, you, it all really works quite well. And so, you know, I, I just think it's um, beautiful. So I want to show uh, another work by Harawaki, and this was sort of deliberate. I wanted to show two pieces that were in this format, this Tanzaku style format, but one was vertical and then another horizontal to really showcase his artistry and how he utilized the formats to his advantage. And so in this case, um, this is a very rare early pre-earthquake design. This was done in 1923. It's called Rain on Izumi Bashi or Izumi Bridge. And, um, you know, so this design, for those of you who don't know, was reworked after the earthquake. Uh, I believe Watanabe thought the scene was very charming. Um, Harawaki may have thought so as well, and they reworked it, um, and so it's a in, a in a in a slightly different sort of format. There's two figures, and they're they're coming in this way as opposed to going up that way. But nonetheless, it's the same sort of idea. And in this case, we 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 see um, the artist working on the subject in an earlier version. And it's a night scene uh, of figures caught in the rain over a bridge. And, and this is, of course, a motif that uh, was probably um, you know, made famous by Hiroshige with his figures crossing the bridge in, in a storm with the rain coming down. But it, unlike Hirosh uh, Hiroshige's design, uh, Hirowaki places the viewer closer up to the figures and where Hiroshige's design it's much more of a larger view it's an aerial view and there's several figures crossing uh, the bridge here we we have kind of a close-up uh, view of them and so what we have here also is these these uh, these people crossing two of them have these lanterns and they're they have this really warm glow to them and really it's the only sense of light that is in the print now Hiroaki makes it a little bit lighter around the bridge and even below to kind of capture an atmospheric quality you can almost see the rain fall on the bridge and as the as it's falling, the rain is being illuminated by the the light from the lanterns. It's so beautiful, um, and there's a sort of a sort of an immediacy to this 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 composition. You you really do get a sense um, of these figures crossing the bridge. It's very realistic when you consider the 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 time of when this print was done and in fact if i compare this to the later version uh, that one is a little bit more idealistic and and i say less realistic in some ways and so this design has a sense of realism um and um you know i i just i could just look at this print um you know and just marvel and in the way that the the design has been printed and you get this wonderful sense of light that's been captured so i'm going to zoom in so you could see exactly what i mean now i want to uh point out as i mentioned at the beginning of our our conversation there is a light that's coming in at an angle and so it's illuminating this print and I think um, looking at it on my screen it's a little bit brighter on my screen than it is in person it's a little bit darker but um, I think you get the gist I'm going to zoom in so you could see the the fine carving of each rain um, um, streak going across You know, and as I said, 
I just think it's a masterful composition inspired by this format. And here, of course, the sheet of paper has been put um, oriented horizontally, um, but it, essentially it is the exact same size as this uh, other composition. And so it's a, it's a really interesting pair to see Hirawaki at work in this format, but one in a vertical um, situated composition and another in a horizontal. And Hirawaki was an interesting artist because um, he certainly experimented and, and produced some wonderful designs in these formats, but he also produced um, prints in Oban size format. Um, he produced prints that were even half the size of this Tanzaku. They were long strip designs. And then he produced Dioban sized prints um, and then double double Oban sized prints as well. So the, the point is he his body of work varied greatly in terms of the um, the size and the format of, of how the compositions were oriented. And so I, I when I think about Shinhanga artist, um, he's the one that I think experimented the most with different um, formats. And quite frankly, I think he was really successful in every single format in, in his prints. back up so you could kind of see them at the, on the table and you could get get a better sense of the light that's coming in um but yeah so these are the two that uh that i wanted to highlight today that are included in my upcoming exhibition that will go live um early next week I want to thank all of you for joining me on today's installment of Woodblock Wednesday. It was my pleasure to show you two really fantastic Hirawaki designs. Um, they, again, will be featured in my upcoming exhibition um, that will go live next week. Um, and again, if you haven't been on our website, the URL is collectingjapaneseprints.com. Um, I want to encourage all of you who are not on our mailing list to please I'll go to our website and, and add yourself to our mailing list so that you'll receive updates about our, um, you know, our, our website um, exhibitions and other activities that we're doing. We also routinely update our bookstore. And so we also have a lot of new offerings there as well. So uh, have a look and um, we're continuing with this series and there's a lot of other prints that I'm looking forward to featuring. So stay tuned for that as well. So until next week on Woodblock Wednesday, I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Bye-bye.